Hello everyone, I welcome you all in my class of CIS 2168 Data Driven Design. This is part third of page hit analysis. And I strongly believe that you all have completed part one and part two of page hit analysis successfully. This is Dr. Hari Mon Pandey from the Department of Computer Science and my email ID is given here. We'll start this session by taking a quick look on the topics which we have covered in part number one and part number two. As far as part number one is concerned, we completed two topics. The first one was web analytics and the second one was data sources. So if you remember all in all, we discussed about four different data sources in part number one. Part number two was focused on log analysis and log data. The focus of this particular session is on the following. So here in this session, we are interested in reading log data, processing the log data to generate the output and to create the plots and we will implement Python program to perform reading and processing of log data. This is part third of page hit analysis and this part is further divided into part number one and part number two. This is part one of part three and it is focused on only reading the log data using Python code. The aim and objectives for this session is shown in the next slide. As mentioned earlier, the focus of week two session is on working with page hit analysis and three objectives have been framed here. Reading the log data, processing the log data and visualizing the results. This is first part of part three and it is focused on the first objective that is reading log data. In the next slide, I have presented a block diagram to understand the steps we use for log analysis. So this slide presents the steps one need to follow for log analysis. All in all, we will discuss four different steps to perform log analysis. So here we go. Uh, the first step is read one entry from the log file. As I said, suppose you have log file, the structure is like this. So it has multiple entries E1 to EN. So the first step is reading log entry. So that is E1, E2, reading E1, E2, EN. Step number two is on splitting fields, splitting the entries into fields. So what we'll do, we'll split this individual entry into fields. In the next step, what we'll do, we'll save relevant feed values. So this is step number three. So this, these three blocks, that is step number one, two and three is, as of now, it is for one entry. That is, we can say for E1, one entry. And a log file may contains multiple entries. So to read all the entries given in the log file, we will repeat this process for all the entries. Once we'll read all the entry, then the next step is count the field values of the log file. After completing step number four, we will be in a, we will be in a position to generate the output statistics. This and that is output statistics. This one and we can use the count values. To create the plots, you can you can uh, create the plots any type of like histogram or any other box plot or any other 
uh, plot you can create. The next slide is given to explain how to read the log entry. Before starting the uh, uh, before starting this Python um, uh, code, we'll first create a Python file. So suppose I'm creating a Python file and I'm giving the name to my Python file page hit analysis dot py. So I, I'm creating a Python file and all my code will go in this file. The first step, since this session is on page hit analysis, so for the page hit analysis, the first step is load the log data given in any log file. So here you can see the name of the log file is access.log. This is the log file. And in order to access the entry, in order to fetch the data from the log file, we need to open the log file first. So here you can see a function, open function is used here to read the data from the log file. So here this open function is performing read operation. We can use the same open function to perform a write operation also. So now we will take a closer look of uh, this the, the given Python code and we will discuss this Python code line by line. So let me mark this Python code as line number one, this is line number two and this is line number three. The statement two statements that is line number two first is a statement and second instruction is line given at in line number three both these that is for loop and a hash process line is in the block of width so here width and as are these two are the keywords of python Python program and this in is a variable and it is used here to access data from the file. Here this in, it is, um, it stores the file return value and internally it is written like in is equal to assignment operator open, this open is the function with argument and here as an argument will pass the log file. So whatever this open function will return, it will be stored in this. So return a statement will go in a file access variable in. Another important thing to note about this code is in line number one, we have used two keywords. The first one is with and second one is as and it automatically assign the open file return value return by uh, open function to in. So these two keywords, keyword one and this one, this is key, another keyword, these two keywords assigns whatever this function will return and this value will be assigned to in. This Python code has additional advantage that when the code inside the with block, so this, the code inside the with block is these two lines for and process line and when uh, the code inside the with block will uh, get completed without any error then what python will do python will automatically 
close this file so this file will get closed once this one and this one will get executed without any error and why we are closing this because we want to ensure that we have no leftover open file now we will see what is given inside the width so inside width we have two lines line number one and line number two the first line is nothing but standard for loop and it is used to loop over so one thing one elegant thing about uh, python is that it reuse the same structure and hides a lot of the complexity so here you can see this for loop has, is very simple to understand if you are using the for loop in any other language like c or c++ then the um, then uh, you need to specify from where to start from where to close and how you will uh, increment uh, how you will perform increment or decrement for example if you are using uh, a for loop in c or c++ or in java it will be like for i is equal to 0 i is less than or equal to 100 i plus plus or i minus minus so this i is nothing but the loop variable and here in this python code this in is nothing but the loop variable it is the beauty of python that instead of specifying the loop looping statement like this python runs uh, python supports a very simple uh, looping statement so here most of the thing most of the instructions are hidden to reduce the complexity that is the reason python is very popular these days so what we are doing here instead we use um, so, so, so what we are doing here we are using for loop and with a for loop variable in so this in variable will read uh, will fetch uh, the, the entries given in the log file access dot log and here python will handle fetching the next line from the input file and assigning that line to the for loop and line is used and here this line what we are doing um, we are um, we are assigning entry fast from the file and this loop will keep on running again and again to fetch all the entries and uh, it will uh, be stored uh, in a list wise manner I have given a code here the same code is given only new thing which is added here is print line so if you want to see the entries uh, of entries given in this log file with this loop so what you can do you can simply replace this process line remove this and place print statement in place of process line to see uh, the entries given in the log file one by one So this is all about how to um, load uh, the, the um, log file and how to uh, fetch the entries given in the log file. So this is very simple Python code which is given here to uh, load and fetch the entries from the log file using standard for loop statement. In the next part of uh, um, part 3, we will discuss how to process the data and how to generate the plots. Thank you very much. You all enjoyed this session.